Hey, professor, here is my demo video for midterm one for the class. Um, I want to go over my code really quick just so you can kind of understand what's going on. Here in my top module, I've defined everything, you know, standard, standard. I've done other signal declaration, which just helps me move between modules. So I have my B into BCD. So I'm taking my switch input. It's coming out. BCD goes out. And then that goes into um, the time mux display, which is what is separating my three digits on my board. Um, the other thing I have is clock. And so I have the I have the standard clock here, and this is what's running into my delay module. And then my delay module um, at the end outputs um, my new, you know, delayed square wave, because this is a square wave generator. And so it's coming out as clock. And then clock actually comes into my uh, finite state machine, which is how I am moving the LEDs. And um, it's using this new delayed square wave to um, create the delay for the LED display. Um, in terms of the individual modules, I have FSM1 right here. Um, this is uh, based off this video on YouTube, I found a guy built it in Verilog for his basis, not like this. He was just having all the LEDs go one way or another, but I used um, the concept to set up this um, if pause case state, and then if else, the states will stay the same. And so that's what allows my LEDs to pause and hold their position. And so um, I'll link that YouTube video there so that you can see it. And then the other thing I have is this delay module which is, um, I based this off of, I think it was lab two, lab two of what we did, which was the, um, yeah, square wave generator. Sorry, I don't know why I blanked there. I'm very tired right now. Um, but what I chose to do is since I only wanted the delay to happen on the negative edge, because I don't want the lights to sustain, I only want the delay between them to sustain, I cut out M and only left N and then I assigned M as one, so M would just hold a steady value of like one nanosecond or something like that. And then um, what I also did was I implemented this internal delay here um, and also down here. And so what that does is I have a delay, I have a delay counter um, and it's set for, I think this is like around 8 million, which turns out to be somewhere around like 20 nanoseconds, I think, if I remember correctly. And so this was also in the um, video I found. And so I incorporated this into my counter reg and my square wave reg so that it would slow down the ticks of everything so that I didn't have to use as big numbers. And so this just kind of helped simplify the math. And so I didn't have to multiply things by like the millions. Uh, so yeah, so anyways, um, here's the demo now. As you can see, I have it in the pause state. So I'll resume it at, you know, we have zero speed right here. And real quick, just to demonstrate the reset, I'll hold the button. The positions will reset. I'll let go and I'll keep going. And then as you can see, I'll start turning it up and the speed will slowly start going down. There you go. Now it's starting to look like it's going down. And we'll get it all the way up to 255. Um, I've tried flipping the switches down and increasing the speed again. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I almost notice that like there's a delay and then it'll start running as almost like the FPGA has to think about it a little bit. But yeah, so there is the demo. Oh, real quick, just to prove that it can stop, stop and start. Have that. Uh, let's see, it'll switch directions. Pause it, let it go. Pause it, let it go. So there you go.